Hello. Uh, this session is packing the data and getting it back out. Um, can everybody see and hear fine? Okay. Well, this uh, talk is about uh, programming techniques to save time and space. Um, basically, you uh, can get disk very cheap now, but even if a te terabyte disk is really cheap, it doesn't mean getting a terabyte off of the a single spindle is going to be anywhere near fast. Disk access takes time. Large data, larger data sets can be handled with the same, old, you know, I'm using older hardware, and uh, data can be organized for quick access for common queries. Before you really try and uh, use these type of techniques, you, it, it's nice to know your data, know your access patterns, and you want to think about what's the common case and optimize for that. But really, you shouldn't be uh, afraid to experiment, and I've gone through several iterations of uh, my exam the program I'm using as an example, and uh, improved the uh, format. The example data set I'm using is uh, the OpenStreetMap uh, data. It uh, consists of a weekly planet file, which is a uh, six gigabytes bzipped and over 120 gigabytes of XML after you expand it. And uh, using a conventional XML database, or SQL database, uh, by the time, you know, despite the fact that XML is an extremely inefficient way of storing things, it winds up SQL wi is even less efficient and you winds up using about twice as much disk space as the uncompressed XML is. And there were some problems uh, originally uh, applying all the the change minutely changes to uh, the SQL database. Um, they eventually got worked out, but that was true at one point in time. Uh, the OpenStreetMap data consists of change sets which I'm going to ignore for the purpose of this talk because they really, they're, they're how the data got to this current state rather than uh, what the current state is and all I care about is what the current state is. Nodes, which are locations, well, okay. Nodes, ways, and relations. A node has a latitude, longitude version and an optional set of tags. I'll explain what tags are later. Ways have version, list of nodes, and tags. Ways, nodes are used for either as parts of ways or relations, or else just a point of interest, like a shop, or a stoplight, or even a tree. <laughs> Ways are uh, ordered lists of, of uh, nodes and uh, can, are, are used for things like streets or lakes where uh, uh, they use a ordered list of, of nodes and it, because it's natural equal water, they know it's an area. Relations have version members and tags. And members can be nodes, ways, or, or relations. And each member also has a role. Um, what they're used, oh, they're, they're used for things like turn restrictions 
and other things, they, they get fairly complex and exactly what they're used for really doesn't apply to this talk. Um, all, to, all those pieces of data have tags which are a key and a value, both of which are free format UTF strings. So, you know, a way can have a highway equal steps to, be, to indicate that it's a set of, uh, it's a staircase. You know, some, some keys are, Com, or, you know, keys are unique within the node way in relation. You can't have two highway keys on the same way. Some strings are common, others are rare. And one of the problems with, with using freeform strings is you'll, you'll get typos into your database. There's a number of higways <laughs> uh, and so forth. But it allows for, for easy expansion and you can create your own new data. You know, if nobody has a thing for a street light, you can do a, a street light. Well, actually, there is a street light thing right already, but you can, uh, you know, if, if there's something you think should be on the map, you can add it to the map without having to go through a complicated approval process. Now, if you want it to be used much, you do have to get people agreeing on what it is. And roles are a simple UTF-8 st string. And most, mostly, they're, they're actually empty strings, but... Okay. Here's an example node. The node ID... You know, 108331, there's just a unique identifier. Uh, the, the, it's a unique identifier for a node, but there can be a way with the same number, there can be a relation with the same number. Version is f equals five, which means this uh, particular node has been updated four times since it was originally created. Timestamp is the timestamp of the, the last time it was updated. The UID and user are, are who did the last update. And the change set is the change set that, that this uh, update was part of. Um, all of those are actually being igno ignored in my example because they don't really apply. Uh, it has, the latitude is 51.496, whatever. The longitude is minus 0 0.13. So it has a location. And it has a direction. I, why a node will have a direction? I, oh, oh, it's a mini roundabout, a clockwise mini roundabout. Uh, so it's probably in the UK where they use just a painted circle in the middle of a street intersection to say, treat this intersection as a roundabout. Okay, here's an example way. This one's a particularly simple one because it only has two nodes and, you know, and one tag but I, I chose simple ones because it fit on the slides better. <laughs> and here's an example relation. And this winds up being a simple relation, but it was difficult to, to get it to fit on the slide. And this one happens to be a uh, turn restriction, so it's indicating you can only make a right turn at this uh, particular intersection. Okay, um, now I'm going to talk about some, some pseudo data types that I wound up defining in order to pack this data in. Um, because the num a lot of the numbers that I was using wound up 
Well, they can be fairly, fairly large, but still the numbers closer to zero are a lot more common. And so I decided to do use a variable length encoding scheme where I'm using uh, seven bits per byte on the, uh, to, for, for the actual number and one bit as a continuation bit. So for w in one byte I can store a number between zero and 127 or two to the seventh minus one. Two bytes I can store, store 128 through 16,300 and whatever. It winds up being slightly more than 2 to the 14th because as a two-byte two thing, I'm not duplicating the possibilities that can be stored in a single byte. So I have an extra 128 possibilities than the 2 to the... It, it's a very minor optimization. And you know, with, two, with uh, three bytes, I can store up to slightly more than two to the 21st, et cetera. Um, this wound up working quite nicely. Um, and I stored it Little Indian because it wound up the program, I, it was much easier to program uh, the access for these numbers, Little Indian, than it was Big Indian. And here's a little Perl routine I have for, for storing one of these uh, VNUMs. Oh, um, for, I mean, if, if you want to access this later, I did, uh, up, as of about an hour ago, I uploaded the slides on, on my talk, so you should be able to access them. And here's a routine to f fetch the VNUM, which actually uh, reads it from a file. because I was always reading them from a file. The, the store I was actually doing to a string and then manipulating it further before I wrote it to the file. And another common data th structure that I wound up doing was you know, like the, the tags, there are a lot of common tags and then there are some really uncommon ones. And so storing it as a string wound, winds up with a lot of duplication, but storing it as an index to a table winds up, well, gee, somebody else created something new, and do I have to create a new table entry and so on and so forth. And so what I wound up doing was using a single value to indicate that the string follows. And so, un, you know, the uncommon strings are indicated by a zero followed by the uh, actual string followed by a null to terminate the string. And for the co actual common strings, I'm using a VNUM to store the string. And so I sort the most common strings have the lower numbers and so the most common 128 possibilities will be stored in one byte. The next most, you know, the next uh, 16,000 and some odd will take two bytes to store and so on and so forth. And it wound up being a quite efficient way of uh, handling this and still have full possibility of, you know, you can type in, you know, you can use anything you want. Um, I'm using a hash for, the, for encoding the string and an array for decoding the string. Um, I assume everybody knows how to, how to do those. Um, I, to, to get the uh, set of common strings, I, I run a program over the, uh, 
current set of the database and do and create the the common string table and one, you know, once I do that I I'll use that for a while and then uh, we'll run that again to get a new version to to compress it further you know because the most common strings actually wind up changing over time and I set use a single venum in the beginning of each data file to uh, store which version of of the table so I don't so I don't have to update the database all at once. And I use separate tables of common strings for each key, each type and key. <laughs> it's getting cut off at the bottom of the slide here. Okay, I actually store a node as a, a size which is a VNUM, um, ID, which is uh, actually, I'm actually using a standard 32-bit uh, number for that because there are more than two to the 20, uh, two to the 28th, I believe it was, that I, I just determined that on average the size would be bigger to use a VNUM because of the number of five byte things to store a full 32 bits than uh, just using a four byte string. Although, um, in, you know, when, when the uh, number of nodes in the uh, OpenStreetMap uh, quadruples from what it is now, I'll have to think about in, you know, going to VNUMs because uh, it'll be more than a 32-bit uh, integer can handle. But before that, I'll have some problems with uh, trying to, uh, you know, lo long before that, I'll have some problems uh, with Perl, and, and it doesn't seem to have any option for uh, handling seek on a very large file. The latitude and longitude I'm storing as integers 32-bit integers, what I'm actually storing is the latitude times 10,000 and the longitude times, or well, not 10,000, I think it's 100,000 or something like that. But anyway, it's, so I'm using almost all of the 32 bits, but storing it as an integer. Um, if, I, if I used a floating point number, I wouldn't have enough accuracy for latitudes and longitudes further from the equator and the way the data work you now we don't need more accuracy close to zero it's just zero is pretty arbitrary on latitude and longitude the version which would you know this just the version number from the, from the uh, uh, data and a set of tags which you know, the, use a key followed by a value, both of which are the common string. And I indicate that the, the end of tags by you know, using the size at the beginning so I know, so I don't have to store any separate number of tags or so on and so forth. It winds up being a little bit complicated to, you know, if I want to you know, I can't just indic index into this, the tags, but I generally don't need to do that. Ways are stored uh, fairly similarly because there are not nearly as many ways as there are nodes. I'm using a VNUM to store the IDs on ways. Um, the Nodes, node list is stored by, as a number of nodes followed by the list of nodes. Actually, okay, I should have used unsigned on the node ID here to match what I did above, but I'm basically, you know, just still a 32-bit integer. And relations are a little bit more complicated. Uh, 
and the, there's the size ID version, and a list of members, which uh, the, the member type is you know zero for for the la indicating that this is the last member, uh, one for node, two for way, three for relation. I'm using a full byte to store two bits of information, but I'm not really trying to get the every last bit in out. Um, the member ID, which is a VNUM for uh, ways and relations or a, or a 32 bit integer for w nodes, and the role is a common string. And tags are handled like the others. Okay, on, on the disk, uh, I'm organizing the data by a tile, where the tile is a group of data in, in, in a, an area of latitude and longitude. And we, we do the, on OpenStreetMap, we do projection for do, Mercator projection for doing the maps. And so I'm using the projection uh, subroutines we already had available, or slightly modified versions thereof. Um, areas with more uh, nodes are stored in more tile. Uh, you know, I'm ac not actually just using one size of tile for all of the world. In areas that are almost all C. There are very few, there's very little of data of interest, and then in the central uh, c center of London, there's a very a lot of data, and so I to to equalize somewhat the uh, size of the groups of data, I'm uh, I'm changing what I'm using. Uh, to, to delete an object, I just change the ID to zero. And so when I scan through the list of the, the file with nodes, I'll say, you know, first read the size, then read the ID. If the ID is zero, I know just to, to skip the, over that many bytes of information to get to the next one. Uh, I mean, using uh, what they call Zoom 11, which is uh, splits the world in two, into two to the eleventh. Uh, so, two thousand and forty-eight uh, groups of latitude and two thousand and forty-eight groups of longitude. So, for four, for you need four million tiles to store the entire world at Zoom 11. And then I'm going up to Zoom 16 for uh, high density areas. So we're talking about millions of tiny little files here. And I, um, for millions of, of tiny little files that are, you know, averaging less than two kilobytes each, uh, I wound up uh, needing to tune the file system, as you're probably not surprised. Um, and it wound up being ext, th fr from the experimentation that was done, ext3 actually wound up being one of the better file systems to use. EXT4 had some advantages, but it wasn't stable enough at the time the, the testing was done. And to, uh, s since I don't want to have uh, 32 million files or whatever in a single directory, I'm using the least significant bits of the uh, uh, both the tile X and tile Y as, you know, to decide which directory to store the file in. Um, you know, 
from a latitude and longitude, you can get a tile, uh, you know, latitude, longitude, and zoom, you can get a tile number. But if you just have the latitude and longitude, you have to figure out what zoom that date piece of data will be in. And so I have an index of which, which tile is at which zoom. Because I'm splitting, you know, when a zoom 11 tile gets more than so many nodes in it, it'll be sli split into four zoom 12 tiles. I, I ha have to have an index to indicate what uh, zoom the each particular tile is. So I can compute which tile the, it would be at zoom 15 and because zoom 16 is the maximum I'm using, I, I don't have to store the uh, la at the full zoom that I, because if, if, a, if at a zoom 15 tile I indicate that this, t this tile is stored at zoom 16, well all, all, the, all four tiles in, that are part of that zoom 15 tile are stored at zoom 16. I'm storing the zoom level as a single byte, despite the fact that that's inefficient again. It's actually about three bits worth of data. And so uh, the uh, zoom index winds up taking a gigabyte. It's a slightly sparse file, but not very. So a little bit of space is saved by uh, the fact that uh, I'm using zero to store that the tile is at zoom 11 and the fact that if you have so many consecutive zeros in a file and, and don't actually write the, the zero to the file, it actually, it, uh, Linux will not use the disk space to store that set of zeros. Okay, for all the other indexes, I'm, I'm just storing the zoom 16 tile number and I can use the zoom 16 tile number to figure out what the uh, zoom, I the zoom is for that particular tile and I use the uh, ID is the index into the file. I mul multiply it f by four because it takes four bytes to store the 16 bits X and 16 bit Y of each particular tile. Yeah. Okay. Um, updating uh, deletes are handled by, by making the ID zero, as I mentioned before. Updates are handled by zeroing the ID and adding the new entry to the end of the file. Um, that means that there's garbage cr uh, created. And I I'm keep a, an, a, a live uh, list of the tiles that need to be garbage collected and will garbage collect a cert up, up to a certain number of tiles per minute so I, I, when, when the uh, updating is very busy, it winds up having a backlog of stuff to garbage collect. And then when, during the slow times, the, uh, the garbage will actually be collected. And fairly frequently, a, a, once one update is done to a tile, another update will be done to the tile you now the next minute, so I don't. So if I keep garbage collecting the same tile over and over every minute, it's kind of inefficient. And when I when I create a new node, uh, the tile is split into four tiles of the next zoom level. If uh, th if there's more than four kilobytes of uh, data data in that uh, node file. And of course, it's not already at zoom 16. Okay, um, I pre 
on updating, I process all the node creates, then way creates, then relation creates, then relation deletes, way deletes, and then node deletes, so that way I don't have inconsistent data. Because if you deleted the node before the way got deleted, it creates inconsistent data. Okay. That's all I have prepared. Uh, are there any questions? Or um, is there an audience mic available? Well, it's it's being recorded, so the Hi. One? Test? Okay, I can't hear anything. Okay, yeah. No. So you say about, uh, talk about packing and unpacking. Uh, is the data, uh, can you restore the actual planet, planet database from that format? Or is it loss, lossy? Because you convert these uh, floating point coordinates to integers. Um, I don't have full accuracy on the, the uh, latitude and longitude, but it winds up that that the way they're storing it in SQL is basically the same technique, and so I'm not losing any more data than, the, than has already been lost. Uh, I am losing the change set information and the user information. Okay, so I cannot download data to the editor from that server and then later upload it to the main server. Um, uh, the version, okay, uh, one, one thing that I should have been clear about is the version, th this is the version of Trappy that I'm working on rather than the version that's currently uh, live available. Um, the version that currently live, that's live and available is not storing the version number and it also is filtering the tags based on, a it was, for primarily, it's primarily used by the tiles at home uh, data renderer. And yeah, there's okay. a lot of lot of common tags that that are just not of interest. And before I figured out how to store these tags as compactly as I have now, uh, it was taking a lot of disk space just to store um, created by tags and so on and so forth. Okay, but it, it would be really interesting to have a real uh, mirror for the real database because at the moment if the real database is down, you pretty much cannot do anything. Yes, um, it, th this uh, should in theory be able to handle the uh, you know, storing enough data to do the edits. However, the cur the, there's a problem of the hourly or the, the minutely change files are not reliably capturing all of the changes. And for, you know, I can't do it if, if the data isn't being passed to me. Okay, I didn't know about that. Yeah, it, it's a problem of uh, when the change set spans too long of a time, the way the Minutely ch minute changes are generated. You can have a way, and it doesn't have all. It misses some of the node creates that are part of that way. And mm, yeah. yeah, it's it's a known problem, and it is being worked on. But I'm not sure when that's going to be fixed. Actually, I'm I'm winding up using the minutely change files that are a half hour behind, which have fewer of those problems, but it still winds up that, that, that there's still some missing uh, data. So I, we can use it for, for rendering and so on and, and things that don't have to have 100% of the data, but unfortunately it is still not reliable and that's not, <laughs> Okay, yeah, thanks. 
Okay. Any other questions? Um, oh, I suppose I should have mentioned things like uh, the you know the the ori original version of Trappy uh, that that did the tag filtering was winding up uh, storing the entire. Uh, database in about 15 gigabytes of disk space. Um, the current version of Trappy that I'm run uh, the ex that I'm running at home, but is not running live anywhere else yet, is uh, storing in about uh, I think it's something like 22 gigabytes. So it's certainly it's not as an efficient a format as the bzipped. Uh, file, but it's a lot more randomly accessible, and because it's indexed by the tile, and most of the, date, the, the data queries we're getting <coughs> are by uh, location, you know, give me all the data around this area. I'm actually returning too much data because I'm rounding up the request to uh, the, the tiles which is one of the reasons that I'm keeping the tile files so so small is so I don't retain return way too much data because uh, the network transmission costs can you know the, the time and and uh, there was there was a small small period of time when when uh, one of the trappy servers had was p paying per uh, traffic volume and it wound up being way too expensive, even, e even the way I was doing it. Uh, oh, um, a, a lot of these type of programming techniques are really pretty old, but most, most of the cr current crop of uh, programmers don't seem to be taught them because, the, you know, the uh, you know disk is cheap and 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 uh, memory is cheap. So why do you need these? Well, if you in a lot of cases you do need them. And um, embedded programmers are obviously quite familiar with uh, packing data into small spaces. Okay. Well, if there's no more questions, uh, thank you.